Hey everyone, welcome back to Ton Does Linux and More. I'm Ton, and today we're diving deep into one of the most essential tools in modern software development and system administration, Docker. If you've ever wondered how to properly install Docker on Ubuntu, or if you've struggled with installation issues in the past, this video is exactly what you need. In this comprehensive guide, I'll walk you through every single step of installing Docker on Ubuntu, from checking prerequisites to verifying your installation. We'll cover multiple installation methods, troubleshoot common issues, and ensure you have a rock solid Docker setup by the end of this video. Here's exactly what we'll be covering in today's tutorial. First, we'll start with understanding the prerequisites and system requirements. This is crucial because many installation failures happen because people skip this step. Then, we'll clean up any existing Docker installations that might conflict with our fresh setup. Next, we'll dive into the actual installation process. I'll show you three different methods to install Docker, but we'll focus on the recommended APT repository method because it's the most reliable and gives you automatic updates. After installation, we'll configure Docker for optimal use, including setting up non-root access, which is something many tutorials skip, but is absolutely essential for daily use. Finally, we'll verify everything is working correctly, and I'll share some pro tips that I've learned from years of using Docker in production environments. By the end of this video, you'll not only have Docker installed, but you'll understand exactly what each step does and why it's important. Before we jump in, let me quickly explain why Docker is such a game changer. Docker allows you to package applications with all their dependencies into lightweight, portable containers. This means you can run the same application consistently across different environments, your laptop, a server, or the cloud. It's revolutionized how we develop, deploy, and manage applications. And Ubuntu is one of the best platforms for running Docker, thanks to its excellent package management and strong community support. So let's get started. All right, let's start with the prerequisites. First and most importantly, you need a 64-bit version of Ubuntu. Docker supports Ubuntu 22.04 LTS Jammy, Ubuntu 24.04 LTS Noble, and Ubuntu 24.10 Oracular. If you're running an older version like Ubuntu 20.04, I strongly recommend upgrading to a supported version for the best experience and security updates. To check your Ubuntu version, open a terminal and run LSB release A. This will show you exactly which version you're running. Next, verify you have a 64-bit system by running uname-m. You should see x86-64 for Intel AMD processors, or ARC-64 for ARM-64 processors. Docker supports multiple architectures, including x86-64, ARM-64, ARM-HF, S390X, and ppc 64 Lee. For hardware requirements, Docker itself is quite lightweight, but you'll want at least 2 gigabytes of RAM for basic usage. If you plan to run multiple containers or resource-intensive applications, 4 gigabytes or more is recommended. For storage, make sure you have at least 20 gigabytes of free space, though I recommend 50 gigabytes or more because Docker images can add up quickly. You can check your available disk space with DFH. Pay special attention to your root partition where Docker stores its data by default in slash var lib docker. Now, Here's something critical that many tutorials don't mention. Docker has some important interactions with your firewall that you need to understand. When Docker exposes container ports, these ports bypass your UFW firewall rules. This is by design, but it's a security consideration you need to be aware of. If you're using UFW to manage your firewall, Docker will create its own IP tables rules that take precedence. This isn't necessarily a problem, but you need to understand that exposed Docker ports will be accessible even if UFW is configured to block them. You'll also need internet connectivity for the installation process and to download Docker images later. Let's verify this with a quick ping test. Before we install the official Docker engine, we need to remove any conflicting packages. Ubuntu's repositories include unofficial Docker packages that can conflict with the official Docker installation. These packages have names like docker.io, docker compose, and codman docker. Even if you think you don't have these installed, it's worth running the cleanup command to be absolutely sure. Here's the command to remove all potentially conflicting packages. 
I'll speak this out slowly so you can follow along, but you can see it displayed on the screen. sudo apt get remove docker.io docker doc docker compose docker compose v2 podman docker containered run c. As you can see, apt-get is telling us that most of these packages aren't installed, which is exactly what we want to see. If any packages were installed, they would be removed at this point. This command is safe to run even if the packages aren't present. Let me quickly explain what each of these packages is. Docker.io is Ubuntu's unofficial Docker package. Docker Compose is the standalone version of Docker Compose. Podman Docker is Podman's Docker compatibility layer. And Container D and Run C are container runtime components that Docker bundles with its official installation. Now we're ready to set up the official Docker repository. Here is an overview of the Docker installation methods. We're using the apt repository method because it's the recommended approach. This method gives us automatic security updates, easy version management, and ensures we're always getting official Docker packages directly from Docker Inc. First, let's update our package index and install the packages we need for HTTPS repository access. sudo apt get update. sudo apt get install CA certificates curl. The CA certificates package provides the SSL certificates we need for secure HTTPS connections, and curl is the tool we'll use to download Docker's GPG key. Next, we need to add Docker's official GPG key to verify the authenticity of the packages we download. This is a crucial security step that ensures we're getting legitimate Docker packages. First, we create the keyrings directory with the proper permissions. sudo install m0755d slash etc apt keyrings. Now we download Docker's GPG key. sudo curl fssl https download docker.com slash linux slash ubuntu gpg o slash etc apt keyrings docker asc and set the correct permissions on the key file. sudo chmod a plus r at c apt keyrings docker asc. Perfect! The GPG key is now installed and ready to verify Docker packages. Now comes the most complex command in this entire process, adding the Docker repository to our apt sources. Don't worry, I'll break this down line by line. Echo deb arch equals print architecture signed by at c apt keyrings docker asc https colon slash print architecture signed by equals at c apt keyrings docker asc https colon docker dot com slash linux ubuntu signed by at c apt keyrings docker asc stable regular at one apt label get null let me explain what this command does. dpkg print architecture automatically detects your system architecture. Signed by tells apt to use our gpg key for verification. And the os release command automatically detects your Ubuntu version codename. This ensures the command works correctly regardless of your specific Ubuntu version or architecture. After running this command, we have a new repository file. Let's update our package index to include the new Docker repository. suno apt get update. Now for the moment we've been building up to, actually installing Docker. The installation command installs several components at once. sudo apt get install docker ce docker ce cli container d.io docker buildx plugin docker compose plugin. Let me explain what each of these packages does while the installation runs. Docker CE is the Docker engine itself. This is the poor Docker daemon that manages containers. Docker CE CLI is the command line interface that you use to interact with Docker. Containerd.io is the container runtime that actually runs the containers. Docker BuildX plugin provides extended build capabilities for creating multi-platform images. And Docker Compose plugin gives us Docker Compose functionality for managing multi-container applications. These plugins integrate seamlessly with the main Docker CLI. Excellent. The installation completed successfully. Docker is now installed, but we're not quite done yet. Let's check that the Docker service is running properly. sudo systemctl status docker. Perfect. As you can see, Docker is active and running. The service started automatically after installation, which is exactly what we want. On Ubuntu, Docker is configured to start automatically at boot time, so you don't need to manually start it after reboots. 
Let's also check what version of Docker we installed. Docker dash dash version. Great, we have Docker version 24.0.7 installed, which is the latest stable release at the time of recording. Now here's where many people get stuck. If I try to run a Docker command without sudo, I get a permission denied error. This happens because the Docker daemon runs as root, and by default, only root can communicate with it. See that error? Permission denied while trying to connect to the Docker daemon socket. This is completely normal and expected. We need to configure Docker to allow our regular user account to run Docker commands without sudo. The solution is to add our user to the Docker group. First, let's create the Docker group if it doesn't exist. sudo group add docker. Now let's add our current user to the Docker group. sudo user mod ag docker dollar sign user. The ag flags mean append to group. We're adding our user to the Docker group without removing them from any other groups. The dollar sign user variable automatically uses your current username. For the group changes to take effect, we need to either log out and log back in or use the new grp command. New grp docker. This command starts a new shell session with the updated group membership. Now let's test if we can run docker commands without sudo. Before we test this, I need to give you an important security warning. Adding a user to the Docker group effectively gives them root privileges on the system. This is because Docker containers can mount the host file system and run with root privileges inside the container. In a production environment, you should carefully consider who you give Docker access to. For development machines, this is usually fine. But for servers, you might want to look into Docker's rootless mode or other security measures. Always follow the principle of least privilege in production environments. Carefully consider who you give Docker access to. For development machines, this is usually fine, but for servers, you might want to look into Docker's rootless mode or other security measures. Always follow the principle of least privilege in production environments. Now let's verify that everything is working correctly by running the classic Docker hello world test. Docker run hello world. Fantastic. Look at this output. Docker successfully downloaded the hello world image from Docker Hub created a container from that image, ran the container, and displayed this message. This confirms that our entire Docker installation is working correctly. The output explains exactly what happened. Docker contacted the Docker HUD registry, pulled the hello world image, created a container, executed the program inside the container, and streamed the output back to us. This simple test actually exercises the entire Docker workflow. Let me explain what just happened behind the scenes. When we ran docker run hello world, docker CLI sent a command to the docker daemon. The daemon checked if the hello world image was available locally. And since it wasn't, it automatically downloaded it from docker hub. Then it created a new container from that image, started the container, executed the program inside it, and cleaned up when the program finished. Let's run a few more commands to explore our docker installation. Docker images. This shows us the images we have downloaded. You can see the hello world image is now stored locally. Docker PSA. This shows all containers, including stopped ones. You can see our hello world container that ran and exited successfully. Docker system info. This command gives us detailed information about our Docker installation, including version numbers, storage drivers, and system configuration. Let me quickly cover some common issues you might encounter. The most frequent problem is permission errors, which we already addressed by adding the user to the Docker group. If you're still getting permission errors after adding yourself to the group, make sure you've logged out and back in or used the new grep command. You can verify your group membership with the groups command. You should see Docker in the list. If Docker isn't starting properly, you can check the service status and logs, sudo systemctl status docker, sudo germal ctl u docker dot service. These commands will show you detailed information about the Docker service and any error messages. Another common issue is running out of disk space. Docker stores everything in slash var lib docker by default, and this can grow quite large over time. sudo dush slash var lib docker. You can clean up unused Docker resources with docker system prune. This removes stopped containers, unused networks, and dangling images. Now that you have Docker installed and working, here are some essential next steps. 
First, I recommend learning about Docker Compose for managing multi-container applications. It's included with your installation as a plugin, so you can start using it right away. Docker Compose version. Second, familiarize yourself with Docker Hub and how to find and use existing images. There are thousands of pre-built images for popular applications and development environments. For security, always keep Docker updated with regular system updates. Be cautious about which images you trust. Stick to official images when possible and always review Docker files before building custom images. In production environments, consider using Docker security scanning features and implementing proper access controls. If you want to learn more about Docker and advanced Docker topics, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new content. I also recommend checking out Docker's official documentation and trying out some of the tutorials on Docker Hub. The best way to learn Docker is by using it, so start experimenting with different containers and applications. Let's quickly recap what we accomplished today. We started by checking our system requirements and cleaning up any conflicting packages. Then we set up Docker's official APT repository, installed Docker Engine with all its components, and configured it for non-root access. Finally, we verified everything was working correctly and covered some troubleshooting tips. You now have a complete production-ready Docker installation on Ubuntu. This setup will serve you well, whether you're developing applications, learning about containerization, or managing production workloads. Docker is an incredibly powerful tool, and you've just taken the first step in mastering it. If this video helped you get Docker up and running, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Ton Does Linux and More for more Linux tutorials, tips, and tricks. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or if there are other Docker topics you'd like me to cover. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep doing Linux.